Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. A big theme of conversation recently has been the apparently crazy offers flying around Silicon Valley for top AI talent, with the latest salvo in that battle being that Sam Altman has confirmed, while appearing on an episode of his brother Jack Altman's podcast, that Meta's Mark Zuckerberg has been trying to poach OpenAI researchers with nine-figure offers. Now, when news of Meta's scale investment first broke, it was accompanied by news that Zuckerberg was personally recruiting a 50-person superintelligence team drawn from those leading AI labs. Anonymous sourcing discussed rumors of compensation packages stretching into the hundreds of millions of dollars range. People were chattering about this on Twitter, but it wasn't exactly clear whether this was hyperbole or literal. Sam Altman seems to suggest that it is literal. He said, Meta has started making these giant offers to a lot of people on our team. You know, like $100 million signing bonuses. More than that in compensation per year. It's crazy. I'm really happy that, at least so far, none of our best people have decided to take him up on that. Altman speculated that his staff are making the calculation that OpenAI has a much better shot of, quote, actually delivering on superintelligence, and also may eventually be the more valuable company. Now, many people were just mouth open aghast at this. Elvis Saravia commented, insane, they weren't kidding when they said pro-athlete level type of compensation. Allman, meanwhile, argued that Zuck's deep pockets won't necessarily make for good culture, saying, I think the strategy of a ton of upfront compensation, and that being the reason you tell someone to join, really the degree to which they're focusing on that and not the work and not the mission. I don't think that's going to set up a great culture. Now, at this stage, we haven't heard any reports of open AI researchers jumping ship to join Zuck's AI dream team yet. But TechCrunch does report that leading reasoning and agentics expert Noam Brown was approached and turned down an offer. Brown is already on record discussing his choice to leave Meta in 2023 to join OpenAI, stating that he met with every major player in the industry. He said that he chose OpenAI because they were willing to put in resources behind the work he was excited about doing, stating, It was actually financially not the best option that I had. And just as a way of understanding how crazy things have gotten in a very short period of time, when this was reported just a month ago, sources were discussing $20 million compensation packages for top-tier researchers as the extreme end of the cash on offer. Certainly what it makes everyone wonder is that anytime we get a report of someone leaving their big lab, i.e., for example, the head of engineering for Google's Gemini chatbot was reported to be leaving yesterday, you kind of have to wonder if these are folks who have been returning Zuckerberg's calls. Altman continued to prod at Zuckerberg's effort to turn AI around later in the podcast, stoking what may be the next big rivalry in the industry. Altman said, I've heard that Meta thinks of us as their biggest competitor. I respect being aggressive and continuing to try new things. There's many things I respect about Meta as a company, but I don't think they're a company that's great at innovation. I think we understand a lot of things that they don't. Ultimately, many see this as a pretty savvy move from Altman. Basically, whether or not this is true, by suggesting that they were officially seeing $100 million types of offers, it makes everyone who takes them look like a mercenary, and it makes everyone at Meta who doesn't have them wonder where their bag is. In any case, if these numbers really are at the levels they're at, you would expect some serious movement in the direction of Meta soon, but so far, it's mostly just reporting around the numbers. Next up, staying on OpenAI for just a minute, the company has secured their first Pentagon contract valued at $200 million. The company announced the project as their first under a new entity called OpenAI for Government. Previous initiatives, including partnerships with U.S. National Labs, NASA, and the U.S. Treasury, will all be brought under this umbrella. OpenAI says the Pentagon contract involves helping, quote, identify and prototype how Frontier AI can transform its administrative operations, from improving how service members and their families get health care, to streamlining how they look at program and acquisition data, to supporting proactive cyber defense. Now, this represents the culmination of an evolution for OpenAI. In January of last year, they removed their total ban on military and warfare usage, and after the White House released the National Security Memorandum on Artificial Intelligence in October, they clarified that their red line was using our technology to harm people, destroy property, or develop weapons. Shortly after that, they announced a partnership with Anduril to work on anti-drone targeting systems, and while OpenAI's announcement emphasized unobjectionable use cases, the Pentagon was a little more forthright. They said that OpenAI had been brought aboard to, quote, develop prototype frontier AI capabilities to address critical national security challenges in both warfighting and enterprise domains. Now, the other little wrinkle of this deal is that it could drive a further wedge between OpenAI and their increasingly estranged partner, Microsoft. Microsoft has thousands of contracts with the federal government, with their secure cloud offering being a highly lucrative linchpin. It was only in April that Microsoft announced that their hosted OpenAI service had been approved for all classification levels. And so the question is, with this direct partnership now signed, is the Pentagon actually just cutting Microsoft out of the deal? Next up, 
the $200 premium price point continues to gain momentum for popular AI services. The latest to jump on this level is that Cursor has launched a $200 a month tier that they are calling their Ultra Plan. The subscription comes with 20 times more usage than the Pro tier. With Cursor writing, this change was highly requested by power users seeking more predictability than usage-based pricing would offer. The $20 a month plan is also being upgraded, with users getting unlimited access subject to rate limits rather than capping out at 500 requests. You might remember that back last December, when OpenAI first announced they would be charging $200 a month for their top tier subscription, many thought that they were nuts. But that service has been very popular for power users who are willing to pay for unlimited usage and priority access to new models and features. Anthropic followed suit and offered their own $200 tier, once again allowing people to pay to avoid hitting usage limits. Cursor is now in a similar position with dedicated users that just want to pay a monthly fee and stop thinking about how much they're using the tool. Still, this is the first time we've seen an AI tool rather than a model company experiment with this level of premium pricing. Separately, Bloomberg reports that Cursor has been fielding offers to raise funds at a valuation between $18 billion and $20 billion. Sources say that Cursor didn't initiate the conversations and may not decide to raise funds at the moment. Remember, this company only closed their Series C two weeks ago, raising $900 million at a $9.9 billion valuation. They recently hit $500 million in ARR, a 60% increase in two months, good enough to be considered at this point the fastest-growing startup in the history of Silicon Valley. Cursor, for their part, denied the reports, saying that they are focused on building the technology product and team. Pretty soon, my friends, we are just going to start using made-up numbers, because hundreds of millions and billions seem to have no meaning anymore. For now, though, that's going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition. Next up, the main episode.